Stop composting wrong. Fermented scraps can actually turn soil into black gold, and they do it fast. Most gardeners are told to throw scraps into a compost pile and wait. The problem is, raw food waste starts rotting before it starts feeding the soil. That rot creates odor, attracts pests, and leaks nutrients into the air instead of locking them into the soil. Nitrogen escapes, moisture imbalance slows microbes, and beginners often quit before compost is ever finished. Fermentation flips this entire process by preserving nutrients first, then unleashing them exactly where soil microbes need them. Fermentation is not composting. It is a controlled, air-free process that allows beneficial microbes to pre-digest food scraps before oxygen ever touches them. Instead of rotting, scraps acidify slightly, locking in nitrogen, softening fibers, and breaking down proteins and sugars into forms soil organisms can instantly consume. When these fermented scraps hit soil or compost, decomposition explodes instead of crawling. The smell shifts from rotten to slightly sour, and that scent disappears once buried. Almost all kitchen scraps can be fermented, including vegetable peels, fruit waste, cooked food, grains, bread, eggshells, and small amounts of meat or dairy. The key is moisture control and correct ratios. Large bones, excessive liquids, and oily soups should be avoided. Everything should be chopped into pieces roughly 1 to 2 inches long, so microbes can work evenly. For every 1 kilogram of food scraps, which is about 2.2 pounds, you must add a microbial food source to trigger fermentation. The most reliable ratio is 1 tablespoon of unsulfured molasses diluted in 100 milliliters of water for every kilogram of scraps. That diluted solution should be sprinkled evenly over the scraps as they are added to the container. If you are fermenting 5 kilograms of scraps, you will use 5 tablespoons of molasses mixed into 500 milliliters of water. The container must be airtight. After adding scraps and liquid, press everything down firmly to remove trapped air, seal the container, and store it at room temperature. Fermentation takes 10 to 14 days. During this time, you may notice a slightly sour or pickled smell when opening the container briefly. That is correct. If you smell rot or decay, air has entered and you need to press the material down again and reseal. Any liquid collecting at the bottom should be drained every 2 to 3 days. That liquid must be diluted at a ratio of 1 part liquid to 100 parts water before pouring onto soil. Never use straight. When fermented scraps are added to compost, they act like microbial fuel. Because the material is already softened and acidified, soil organisms and fungi colonize it immediately. Compost heats faster, stabilizes moisture, and finishes dramatically sooner. Fermented scraps should never exceed 30% of the compost pile by volume. The ideal ratio is one part fermented scraps mixed thoroughly with two parts dry carbon material like shredded leaves or cardboard, and one part fresh green material. This balance prevents acidity buildup and keeps oxygen flowing. You know, fermented scraps are not finished compost, so they must never be left on the soil surface. They really have to be buried. When you use them the right way, though, they become one of the fastest soil-building inputs you can get your hands on. The correct application rate is about 1 kilogram of fermented scraps per 1 to 1 and a half square meters of garden bed. That's roughly 2 pounds for every 10 to 16 square feet. To apply, you'll want to dig a trench about 6 to 8 inches deep. Then, just spread the fermented material evenly along the trench and cover it completely with soil. No scraps should be visible at all. After you've covered everything, water lightly to help settle the soil. It's important to wait 2 to 3 weeks before planting directly over that area. This waiting period gives the acidity a chance to neutralize and lets the microbial activity settle down. For a small garden, say 10 to 20 square meters, you'll want to use about 5 to 10 kilograms of fermented scraps per cycle. Apply them in trenches between your rows or in unused sections and rotate the locations every 4 to 6 weeks. 
Now, if you've got a medium garden, maybe 50 to 100 square meters, 20 to 30 kilograms can be applied each month. Just make sure to divide them into sections instead of piling everything in one spot. And for large gardens or allotments over 200 square meters, 40 to 60 kilograms per month works best if you combine it with compost application. That way, you get even nutrient distribution across your whole space. So, once those fermented scraps are buried, they really wake up the dormant soil biology. Bacteria start multiplying like crazy, fungi spread through the softened fibers, and earthworms usually move in within just a few days. Nitrogen becomes plant available, but it won't burn your roots. Phosphorus gets more soluble, too. Organic acids chelate micronutrients that were locked away before. The soil structure just gets better, water retention goes up, and root systems expand deeper and faster. It's pretty remarkable, honestly. So, here's the thing. Because fermentation happens in sealed containers, those kitchen odors you might be used to, they just disappear. And when you take that fermented material out to the garden and bury it, it doesn't attract pests since it's not decomposing aerobically right there on the surface. You'll notice too that your household waste volume drops dramatically, often by more than a third, honestly. Instead of hauling nutrients away, you're cycling them directly back into the soil, right where your crops actually need them. Over time, repeated use of fermented scraps builds stable organic matter, and it does it faster than compost alone. Your soil becomes darker, looser, and just a whole lot easier to work. You'll see crops with stronger early growth, improved leaf color, and better resilience when it comes to heat or moisture stress. And, you know, with biologically active soil instead of sterile ground, pest pressure often decreases as the seasons go by. Now this method doesn't replace compost, it really upgrades it. Fermentation preserves nutrients first, then delivers them to the microbes at peak efficiency. So instead of waiting months for scraps to break down, you're actually controlling the process all the way from your kitchen to the garden. Once you see how fast your soil responds, honestly, raw scraps just won't feel like waste ever again. If you want faster compost, healthier soil, and stronger crops without expensive inputs, start fermenting your kitchen scraps today. Just use the correct ratios, bury them properly, and let biology do the rest. If this video helped you rethink composting, go ahead and subscribe to Soil and Crop Central, share this with another grower, and keep building soil the smart way.